your baby keys. What are we doing? We're gonna play with them in the big puddle. We have to go out the first time. I'll buy them. I'll buy them. All right, we set down the bucket gently. Take them out. They're a bit scared. <laughs> hey guys, and welcome back to Farmer Joe Homesteading. Today we are going to be showing you guys our incubation process for our goslings and how to hatch out geese successfully. Today is our first day bringing our two-day-old goslings from our weekend hatch out for a little bit of puddle time. We are so excited to share this journey with you as incubating goose eggs is not as common as chicken and it has been so fun for us the last few years. Incubating goose eggs is much more time consuming and a little bit different than chicken eggs. I hope you guys find this video informative. Goslings are so much fun and they are something that we look forward to here on the farm every year. And we're so excited to get to share this experience with you guys. So goose eggs need turned a minimum of three times daily. Odd numbers is best so that they're not on the same side all night long since I'm not turning them during the night. You could see there was an X on each of the goose eggs. That's to help me remember what side they're on so that I know that all of them were turned. So three times a day I come in here and just give them a quick turn. On day five, we'll start the cooling and misting period of the incubation for goose eggs where I will be removing them to a safe spot, misting them, and then putting them back into the incubator. I have tried getting away with incubating goose eggs without doing the cooling and misting, and actually my hatch rate went down. So I do find that for whatever reason, the goose eggs do really well with the cooling and misting. So I will be starting that in a couple of days. So the time has come to candle and check on these goose eggs. I did do a candle on day seven and with goose eggs because they are so large it's best to wait a little longer so today is day 13 i had a turkey hatching in there so i wasn't able to do day 10 so let's go ahead and have a peek was the perfect example of why it's best to candle goose eggs late and wait. When I checked these guys the last time around day seven, I thought there was only seven that are alive. There is nine all. So there's two here on the end that do have question marks, but they looked exactly the same as everybody else. I just couldn't really see good veining, but they're the exact same embryo size and everything. So. Um, I'm gonna throw them back in just because it's just hard to tell sometimes the, the good veining. So, so this is how I line them up for their cooling and misting. So I just have my spray bottle here with some cool water 
they just get a good spray down. They've been sitting out here for a few minutes. It's still early, so they can sit out here for five to 10 minutes. And then once you hit, I think it's either day 14 or 15, they can go to um, 15 minutes out of the incubator. So that is all. And I can just line them all up with this homemade incubator. There's a turkey in here. I try to line them up in different places to avoid any hot and cold spot problems. For geese, I keep my temperature between 99 and 100, and I keep my humidity between 50 to 60, and then at lockdown, I try to up it between 60 and 70. Once the geese start hatching, it's normal for it to go to 80 to 90, which is totally fine. Most sites will recommend starting at 60%, but I found that my air cells did not drop a significant amount needed for hatch day, and so I find 50 to 60 better for my goslings. guys so when i was assembling the goose egg video for you guys to be able to see i realized that i had some explaining to do on the eggs how we went from 15 excited in the beginning down to nine on day 13 and then down to four for locked it's so dark i just uh, had to do my night milking for annie so what ended up happening with the geese We've been having some issues with the fertility and I had talked about it before um, in one of our Friday updates. So our, our fertility was sitting at 60% when I just did that hatch, which meant we had nine out of the 15 fertilized, which is pretty good. So I, it was way better than it was initially. We were sitting at about 10% at the start of the season. So even though 60% is not near the 90 to 100 I'm wanting, it's still a step up from where we had started. So that is why we lost half right off the bat. And then I ended up discovering that partway through the hatch, the temperature was off. So I ended up knowing something was wrong when I did the candle. I did do some candling on, um, it was just after day 13. I don't remember what day it was now. Um, just to check on things because it's pretty easy when you're cooling and misting to candle often. And when I first started doing it, I would. I would, uh, I would definitely candle them pretty much every day. 
Um, and it's really neat to do it that way and see the development. And so I noticed that something was off. And so I put an extra thermometer in there and ended up realizing that it was off. Um, it's a homemade incubator, so having an off temperature does happen and it's something that I need to be more diligent about. So once I got the heat set at the right spot, then the other four eggs did just fine. The, one, the four that survived were the four that were the closest to the middle where the heat was the best. So that's why those four survived. And obviously they are thriving as you can see from the video in the beginning. So that is how we went from 15 to nine to four.